Well, hello kitties. Here we are again with another homemaking adventure. I'm going to show you how I just had to uh, install a vac pan. And you're probably saying, what in the world is a vac pan? Well, our whole house uh, vacuum system has all these ports. This is one of them that's in the wall. Uh, some of you might recognize this. This is my doggy retention device over here. So we have a built vac system. It's got the um, vacuum motor out in the garage and then it's piped all over the house. So when you want to vacuum, you drag the hose out and you open this little flappy thing here like that. You plug the hose in and uh, turn it on. There's a couple little contacts you can't see in there. That uh, turns on the motor out in the garage and uh, you can uh, vacuum the whole house. You don't have to drag a great big heavy motor around. Um, that's a good thing and a bad thing, of course, because the hose is huge. It's really, really long, and uh, it's a pain to get out of the uh, storage closet and drag it all around because we have these uh, two new little doggies, so we have to uh, sweep the floor quite often. So because of that, I determined that uh, I wanted to put in a vac pan, which is an accessory that... Uh, I have been uh, holding for a long time because when we had the house built I uh, told them I wanted a vac pan put in under in the kitchen uh, down here and for whatever reason uh, they didn't do it. Um, they put in instead a regular um, a port which doesn't do me any good. And because we have these two new dogs, uh, our little doggy Ethel here, I, I don't have a picture of uh, Lucy but uh, here's Ethel. She's been uh, kind of growling at me to fix this problem because she messes up the floor all the time. It would be a lot easier to use a broom with a vac pan than it is to drag out the, the great big old hose. So it's the wrong type of port down here. It's really stupid because this thing is uh, only a few feet away from the one that's in the wall. We never ever use this thing because it's there's no, no use for it. You can't sweep anything into it like you can with a vac pan. So it's the wrong kind of port. And uh, I just finally decided with all the doggies things going on and some of the other improvements we're doing, I was going to finally get around to putting in the vac port that I've had in a box for 16 years. So the first thing I did was uh, remove the old wrong one right here. And you can see when, whoever put this in, they wrapped it with duct tape and uh, the hole, the actual vacuum hole is very small because of the way they did this. Uh, this is really, really, really flaky. Um, so I wanted to put in a, a new uh, new vac pan, actually an old vac pan, because I've had it for so long. Um, and I'll tell you this little story that goes along with this. This is uh, the, the newer version of the vac pan. Um, this is what should have been installed, or actually the older version that I've had. Um, you can see it's a lot different than the uh, standard port. The, uh, the vac pan itself requires a much larger hole than what they cut, cut for a standard port. Um, and you might note this if anyone out there is uh, thinking about doing any kind of changes on, on your built-in vac system, if you happen to have one, is that these are all listed as 2-inch pipes, 2-inch pipes and fittings and all that kind of stuff. Well, 2 inches is not necessarily 2 inches because this is not the same size as PVC 2-inch plumbing pipe. I know because I went down um, I took my the other vac pan that I had down and uh, tried to use some of the PVC fittings at the local hardware store, um, and they don't work. They are not the same size, so you have to order the parts if you need them uh, from a vacuum store, which is what I did. And this caused me a, one of these senior moments because I took that uh, old vac pan that I had down to the hardware store, found out the fittings wouldn't work, took uh, put it back in my truck. Uh, and then um, uh, had to order out uh, some parts because to use the old vac pan that I had, the access is up here. It's not straight out the back. It's up here. So I had to order a, a real short 90 degree in order to be able to uh, plug it into the piping inside here. Well, that took a couple of weeks to get that stuff. And when I finally got the bag of parts that I'd ordered to put in that old vac pan, guess what? I couldn't find the vac pan. I still can't find the vac pan. I can't figure out where in the world it would have gone. Um, 
But in any case, it turned out uh, to be a little bit better because I said, okay, I'm going to have to order another vac pan now that I've got the fittings. And I discovered that they have the newer type here that comes straight out the back rather than going out the top. Now, why is this the problem? Because this is in a cabinet that's installed in the bottom of the cabinet, of course. Uh, the shelving is part of the cabinet. You can't take that out to get access back inside the cabinet. So I was going to have to cut a hole in the floor of the cabinet, which I was really reluctant to do. But I thought, hey, with this one going straight in, rather than having to have a 90 degree requiring an access cut in the cabinet, I just get this one right here. And not only that, it has little LEDs so you can see the dirt you're going to sweep in. So there's my senior moment right there. And I'm still senior moment because I can't figure out what in the world I did with that thing I've been holding for 16 years. And then I lost it at the last minute. Oh, well. So um, the cover plate for the new vac pan uh, that I purchased and finally got uh, indicates the size of the hole that you have to cut, which you, you can see is uh, larger than the original wrong installation uh, that the uh, folks put in when we had the house built. So the first thing I did was remove the shoe molding. You can see the cutout down here. So you couldn't have swept any dirt in here, no matter what, even if you held this little flap open on the old uh, wall type thing. So I pulled the shoe molding out. Uh, and then I used my multi-tool um, to uh, cut uh, the hole that you need for the uh, new vac pan. I just marked it with a pencil using this. This is the guide right here. So I cut it out like that. Pretty easy to do if you've got one of these multi-tools. And you notice that I've cut it flat along the top of the uh, floorboards right here. And that's because the vac pan needs to sit right down on the floor. Otherwise, you sweep dirt under the vac pan. So I cut that out. And then I had to cut out this, this thing that they had stuck on here. Um, and it was just stuck, too, because it's not supposed to be glued so that you can pull the unit out away from this if you need to. But it was stuck after 16 years, so I couldn't get it off. So I had to, once again, use my little multi-tool to cut this bracket out of here. Um, and it came off. Then I had to sand the inside of this because it was a ridge here where it had been sitting for so long. And this is not actually part of the pipe. This is a sleeve that fits over the pipe. So they have glued the sleeve over the pipe, but they didn't glue the fitting, the uh, the um, uh, standard wall fitting that just kind of plugged in there using all that uh, electrical tape to make a tight fit. So it wouldn't have worked very well even you know, even if I had decided to work it well because of the way they uh, taped that whole thing shut, almost shut I should say. So then I uh, connected up the wiring. Um, there's a black wire and a red wire. Actually it's, it's uh, kind of daisy chain throughout the whole house so that um, any place can turn turn the uh, vacuum pump on or the uh, the motor. So uh, you take the black control wires and you hook it to the uh, the negative yellow. They're marked up here, uh, and and then you take the um, red wires, which are the hot wires, and they're not 110 or anything. I I don't know what they are. I think probably 12 volt or something. Uh, DC and you connect that to the yellow marked plus uh, pigtail and if you don't do this it, you can still turn the vacuum system on but this particular unit has LEDs and uh, they have to have the polarity correct so I hooked all that stuff up and then I pushed it in there to make sure that I didn't you know mess up the wiring or anything push it in there so that the back end of that thing would run into this sleeve right here all right uh, pushed it in in there and then uh, check the operation by lifting the little uh, gate right here and when you do that uh, the LEDs come on and it turns the vac system on right there so made sure it, it worked okay and then I secured it uh, to the cabinet base there was a, a couple of screw holes in here so I had to drill a couple of holes just for some wood screws to hold it up against the base right there you can't see them because the LEDs are in the way but they're right down here this is a kind of a pain too if you're old and creaky because you have to lay on your side to do all this stuff. I noticed um, the next day my hip hurt like Dickens. I couldn't figure out why. Well, it's because I've been laying on the floor sideways all that time to put this thing in. Um, so I cut uh, uh, the uh, shoe molding. Had to cut that section out, and then I cut and fit it so it goes around the uh, the plastic molding right here, right. So I stuck it in there and um, 
there you go. It's a pretty simple job. Um, it's just that if you have to do it afterwards, like I did, you got to lay on the floor. You got to kind of figure out where the piping is and which kind of uh, one of these vac uh, pans you want to use. But uh, this is working really well. So now we don't have to drag out that big old hose. Uh, just to sweep up the kitchen floor. We can use just a really nice soft broom. You just lift this up, it turns on, you sweep the stuff in there and close it down. Pretty cool. So there you go, Bob's your uncle. Pretty easy if you got the right tools and so on and so on. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is just one of many uh, videos we have up on our YouTube channel, which is maybe where you found this one. I'm um, going to have another one here pretty soon. I had a, another one of these uh, home fix-it things. Seems that we're doing a lot of that. We decided to stay in this house after 16 years uh, rather than moving here in Southern California. Everything is incredibly expensive and it costs a bunch of money to move. So we like it where we are. We're going to stay here. So I no doubt have lots more of these uh, home fix-it things coming up.